the EZNZ podcast on tour. As you can see, we are here in the magical Shanghai, China. We are going to have an incredible week in store for us. Um, this is your first time on the Train the Trainer page. Yeah, it's my first time, so I'm super excited. Like, uh, I've already met a few people in the lobby of the motel we're staying at, so I'm really, really excited to take you guys on the journey with us. Um, especially since it's my first time as well. Absolutely, so we're going to introduce you guys to as many of the global trainers as possible. And we're going to ask them two questions this week. What you love about the April update and what was the first product that you absolutely fell in love with from Microsoft. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast and we'll see you soon. Well, first up, uh, my nickname is DMAC, but you guys might know me as Daniel. Um, but <laughs> I'm uh, from New Zealand. I uh, lived there most of my life, and recently I made the move over to Australia. I'm a master trainer now in New South Wales. Uh, my favourite feature, I actually really like the, the features in Edge that we've brought through. Um, Edge is something that I work in every day, and a lot of us are working in browsers a lot. Um, I love that we are evolving the platform, not just making nice animations and things, but we're doing stuff like making an immersive reader in there that can read me out a whole web page or a document or a PDF if I wanted to. Um, it can change up the color of the page and I can add in separations and things there to make it a little bit easier for me to read, especially for kids that are learning in school. I think it's really impactful. I think Edge is, is by far my favorite change in this update. Yeah, my name is uh, Patrick Tron. I'm a master trainer for Windows and Office in Canada. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Viola and I'm the evangelism lead in Canada. Hey, I'm Richard Gunter and I am the master trainer on Surface and Xbox. Awesome. Are you, are you guys all from the same city? We are. Well, we work um, in the same city. Maybe yeah. we were from the same city originally, but we all currently reside in the great <laughs> Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So what is the best city in Canada then? Toronto. Toronto. Toronto! Toronto is the center of the universe, pretty much. <laughs> I have to say my favorite city in Canada is Vancouver. I did reside there for a few years. Um, but Toronto is a very close second. No, fair enough. And what, what we really want to know is what first made you guys fall in love with Microsoft? Love it. Love it. I think we're going back to like Windows old school, man. I'm thinking Millennium 98, uh, right in the days getting into gaming on PC, right? Like, it's just default. Um, 2004, um, had a paper route, saved up some money, bought the original Xbox, the Duke controller, Project Gotham Racing. Uh, my gamer tag of Viola13 is a proud 14 years old. I got that email in January. Uh, so I've been playing Xbox well before I was even working with the company. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Why, did, why are we all big gamers here? Uh, uh, yeah, it's got to go back to Xbox, you know, back in the day on 360 with Xbox Live and uh, just playing like Halo and Gears of War with my buddies till literally all hours of the night. What's the best Canadian food as well? Ooh, poutine, cool. right? I mean, yeah, it, from a Canadian, poutine. yeah. Poutine yeah. is kind of the, the one we go to, but yeah. maybe, maybe I'll blow your minds a little bit. Okay. Alberta beef? I like it. Canadian beef or known. You eat it in Australia, New Zealand, all over the world. Um, we are big exporters of Alberta beef, which is a province just east of uh, Vancouver. Nice. That that's awesome. I've um. What what is poutine? Tell tell it for. Oh, the... what is poutine? It yeah. is pretty much amazingness in it one is. bowl. It is. It is joy. Yeah. yeah it, it is, is joy. French fries with cheese curds, cheese. They're like little curds, and then gravy on top. And then gravy yeah. on top. And then it you is... mix it all. The cheese melts. The gravy warms up the fries. The inside of the fries are dry, the rest of it, it's just a very nice balance of pure calorie bliss. That's, yeah. that's amazing. It sounds like, like, you know, heaven for your mouth. It is. So. It is. Common late night snack after, uh, after studying, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's a popular bar in Toronto. No, okay, catch, you, thanks, catch you next Thank time. You. Yeah. Peace out, New Zealand. <laughs> My name is Sydney Sisko. I'm part of the Worldwide Foot Labor Team, and I handle operations and training support. The first product that I fell in love with, I gotta say, was the Surface Pro 3. Uh, I hadn't had a laptop prior to that that was really portable, so with it being really small and being able to detach, I was able to take it everywhere. I used it as long as I possibly could, but I gotta say that I do love the Surface laptop now. <laughs> Oh 
I, a concert to public belief, my name is Paolo, uh, UK and Ireland, and I am the Xbox SME. The people can't pronounce names. Yeah. Paolo has many names. I have yeah. whatever you want me to I call. think you suit Pablo more, if I'm honest. He's a man of many talents yeah. and many names. Many names, many talents. Also, hi New Zealand, yeah. how are you doing? That's great. The, the way you took off those sunglasses. You're now speaking to yeah. Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, and we have Gareth. Yeah, Gareth um, was Surface SME, now moved over to a Windows category. So, um, loving life at the minute because Windows is awesome. He's uh, also known as the Unboxing Man, and yes, he does sniff Arc Mouse for fun. I enjoy a good, fresh product. That is a, that, that is a statement I'm, I'm proud of. <laughs> there he is. Exactly right. Fresh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fresh. 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 Well, I like to hope so. <laughs> As of about three hours in. <laughs> Last and very forget. much least, uh, my name's Andy from the UK as well. I have the delightful pleasure of uh, managing and Ireland. <sighs> UK yeah. and managing the UK and I uh, evangelism team. So these um, gorgeous gentlemen plus uh, at least eight of us. So, Ooh, what first made me fall in love with Microsoft? I think, well, you know what, it was Windows XP. Yeah. Yeah, I got to uni, got my first uh, laptop, I was playing Max Payne on it. Uh, did my uh, university degree on it, mostly played Max Payne on it, but yeah, that was, that was everything in one. Oh, and actually, also knowing more than my dad and um, locking him out of it and making <laughs> all the sounds change so that when he turned it on, it just swore at him. Ah, oh, classic. <laughs> what a great child you must have been. How about you, man? Um, it's the original Microsoft Paint. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, Paint? Yeah. I, I remember what I created as well. It was uh, the front page of the Caterpillar. Remember the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah the Hungry Caterpillar. Yeah, the Hungry Caterpillar, yeah. It didn't look exactly like a It looked like a bag of worms, to be honest. <laughs> it, was, it was lines. And, and the, the interesting thing about paint is, back then, um, and it's not that long ago, honestly, mm -hmm. um, I could only print it out on a dot matrix printer. <laughs> so it came out in black and white, and it sounded like... Ju -ju 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 -ju. And it, it, think where paint was and where we are now, and that wasn't that long ago, relatively speaking. Like, it's just come on leaps and bounds, and, and the same UI and feeling that people are getting from the modern day paint 3D. I'm sure they're having them experiences, but the one thing that I want to know is, like, in the future, yeah. How more advanced is Paint 3D going to be compared to the old Paint? You know, if you can so them. if we do yeah. the same podcast in about 20 years' time, we'll be going. You know, when when was that kind of seminal moment for Paint? You go. Oh, remember when you back in the day when you had 3D models? Where you, <laughs> you, could, you, you had to actually click and import it into PowerPoint yeah. and then animate it yourself. Yeah. A lot, lot, lot of love for Paint. Big OG time. Paint. Oh. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, there's probably probably two for me. So um, uh, before I was a, a training manager, I was the Xbox SME. So uh, <laughs> exactly right. So there's two different probably moments in time for me. One was um, playing the very first Halo because oh. it was that moment when I went, "This isn't just fun. This is something I need to do with my life." <laughs> um, like I remember staying in. Like, all our flatmates were like, "No, we ain't going out. We're staying in. We're staying in to complete this game as much as possible." Um, but when you talk about, I guess, pure product love. The first time I tried Connect for Xbox 360 was it was a, a real turning point because it was the first time in such a long time that I've done. It changed the way that you just interacted with technology. It changed the conversation. And for me, it was like. It, it's, it's all those magic movies, you know. It's it's the Matrix. It's um, um, what's it called? Um, what was the thing with Tom Cruise? Minority Report. You know, it's all yeah. those things, and you go, this isn't just amazing. This is changing the game, uh, and and that turned me from being. Yeah, a bit of a fan to an absolute advocate of this is a company I need to be involved with. Yeah, I, yeah. I've got to say with Halo, I, I had a similar experience. So, first thing I did was just stare at the grass. It sounds weird, but it's like, oh my god, how realistic does this yeah, look? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and I even ran upstairs, got my yeah. brother, and I was like, look at this grass! <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you're playing yeah. a. a game where you're a mechanical warrior and I'm like, but the grass is cool, right? Yeah, but check out the, the flora yeah. and fauna. And I, we used to we used to have um, gaming parties where you take massive TVs round, plug all the Xboxes yeah. in and it was Halo 2 and just have a multiplayer bash. Oh, do you remember when you used to uh, network them in, cap yeah. five them in together? Yeah, cap oh. five I, I still have five. trails and trails of cap five cables. <laughs> Thank God for no. Wi-Fi. Indeed. Know, right? <laughs> and thank God for you guys. Thanks very much for that. That was awesome. No worries, guys. Take it easy, New Zealand.
Hey New Zealand, how's it going? My name is Christopher Cleary, aka Cleary Monkey on Xbox One and Xbox Live. And I'm from Canada, eh? And yes, we do have a lot of snow up in Canada. Uh, pet beavers are definitely a thing. And if you do come up, come join us and have some real maple syrup on some flipped in. What's your uh, favorite feature of the April update? Oh man, favorite feature of the April update is going to be... Hmm, there's actually a whole bunch of them. Focus assist. I think so, only because of the fact that my wife loves to mess with me all day long by saying, ooh, I like this, and we should look into this, and sometimes I actually have to get stuff done. Uh, hopefully all of you have to get stuff done once in a while. So it's going to be really cool because I can actually focus assist, but also still let certain messages come through from my boss, which is kind of important because I like my job, uh, and I don't just want to block everyone out, but I can definitely block out my wife, but I'm pretty sure she's not going to see this, so that's okay for me to say. I don't recommend anyone else doing yeah. that, okay? What's your wife's name so we can tag her into this podcast? Uh, her name's Vicky. <laughs> there we go. Good luck, yeah, yeah. What's your email, Chris? Uh, good luck finding that one. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Take care. Alright, Jay, I have accepted your challenge for Help Us Help Hannah. While I'm here, I'm taking this bad boy around and I'm going to get as many as the people you've seen on this podcast to sign it and hopefully more. So, wish me luck. Off we go. Zealand. I am Liam Kingswell from the uh, Avengers team in the UK and unfortunately I. Plus one. Um, but I've got a little bit of a different role. I, I play as a, I play as, I, I am a digital training specialist. So I look after our digital strategy in the UK and I from an Avengers point of view. So uh, before we get into our important questions, uh, how, how did you get so fine? What do you mean fine? You're just fine person, look at you. Oh. Those sunglasses and everything. Well, these aren't mine, I just actually pinched them. He's oh, aimed so fine, he blows their minds. Hey Liam, <laughs> don't hey, start Liam. that, please don't hey, start that. Just a fan, just a fan, you're blowing that at least. See what you've got to put up with. Just a fan, just a fan, you're blowing that at least. My favourite thing about the April update, um, if any of you get to know me, I'm a very, very forgetful person. I um, get visited by the fairies at night and um, they wipe my memory and um, it's dreadful. So one of the great things I love about the April update is the new timeline feature and it's crazy. I tend to do the same searches over and over and over, but actually now I can just go back to my timeline and actually find that original search and just find it straight away, which I really, really love. But also from a document point of view, it's really helpful. So yeah, it's probably my favorite thing of the April update. My name is Jerry Lynch, and I am a product evangelist on the UK and Ireland. It was a Surface Pro 3. Um, I had primarily kind of used PCs just for, you know, everyday use, but everyone used it for. And then I saw Pro 3. I was given it when I started working for Microsoft. And there was an NFL video that was being shown at the time which showed off features of having like your tactics yeah. board and all that kind of stuff. And I coach soccer, so it was really good for me to go, that's actually something I would never have thought of using my PC for, and I'm going to steal that and use it. So I got introduced to Penny straight away as a result of that for drawing arrows, where what players to go, and how to go. And that I kind of evolved with that through all the different surface devices, and I've added different layers to it through PowerPoint with Morph. Um, but that was the, the first stand they were kind of blown, and I fell absolutely in love with Pro 3. It was the, my favourite device for so long. Awesome. And how do you maintain such a shiny hit? Uh, I wax it a little bit, but keeping it at a nice even trim every day is very, very important. Being a hot day is really handy because that allows the moisture to just come up and form a natural kind of wax. I'm Danelle Arfberger and I am the worldwide channel lead for Surface. And uh, I'm Bill Bush, and I am the worldwide lead for uh, retail and device evangelism. What was your first Microsoft product that really made you fall in love with the brand and the Microsoft story? Wow, that's a um, <laughs> big question. For one, I've been at Microsoft for many years, and I've had the privilege to launch many products at Microsoft. And I'd have to say, like, every time I have a launch, that almost becomes my next favorite product. I mean, there's, it's just so, it's like to pick your favorite child. I mean, honestly, and I just, I have had that 
you know, the blessing to be on Xbox. I've had, you know, Windows. I've worked on Office. Believe it or not, phone, band, for those of you that have had Microsoft band. So I've been, had a super fortunate um, opportunities for the Microsoft, and I love them all. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, like to know, I've uh, been around for a while. Uh, but three examples kind of jumped out at me, um, you know, kind of casting my mind back. Uh, Word 5.1 for the Mac, unbelievable for, you know, really the definitive word processor on Mac for like 15, 20 years, right? It was just like an absolute, and in a lot of ways set the bar for where the office apps on the PC side eventually went to. Um, so amazing, amazing product. Uh, the ArcTouch mouse, when I joined Microsoft, uh, you know, it, you know, you think about Microsoft as super powerful enterprise software. You know, sort of like the you know Windows was like the thing that you had to use for business. But the Arc Touch, mount, Arc Touch mouse was such beautiful and elegant design, and you're just like, there's a level of thoughtfulness and innovation. You're just like, nobody else has this, and you're just like, okay, that's really slick. And uh, it was a similar thing. I, like to know, I actually joined Microsoft uh, full time on the phone team, and. I, you know, I was, I was using other phones at the time, and I was like, "Oh, you know, this product better be good." And I remember, just it was actually the uh, the date and time settings on Windows on Windows Phone, where it was just like so smooth and so fast, and just like the you could tell that someone who really knew how to build great UX had like just a little specific feature. You're just like, this is just the way this should work. And I still go back to phone, and I'm like, I have. The delta between the quality of the product and the market penetration uh, will never cease to. It will. It won't. It will never not make me sad because I think we had something really magical there. And you're just like, what's great now though is like so many of those brilliant minds, so many of those brilliant ideas are now in big windows, and so we're starting to see some of that greatness really come through. So it was those for me are sort of three moments, but there's more. Thanks. Uh, I'm Craig Jackson, I'm the Field Labour and Evangelism League in Australia. Uh, so I look after all of our own labour. Um, I'm lucky enough to work with these people as well. Um, and uh, that's me. Cool. Hey guys, uh, my name's Chris Turner. I'm a master trainer. I'm based in Melbourne, Victoria, uh, and cover all of our lines of business. Uh, Windows 10, Office 365, Surface, Xbox, and PCA. I would say your beard is far superior to DMAX. Is that a fair analysis? <laughs> I think that was an accurate uh, statement. Yeah. <laughs> Fierce. 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 Do, you to, do you want to introduce your beard to the yeah. to the um, Yes, its name is um, Tomo. 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 <laughs> Tomo. Tomo. Tomo is here. Say hi. Tomo. Hello, Tomo. <laughs> awesome. I don't know how to follow Tomo's beard. Tomo's beard. Um, hello, my name's Steve. Um, I am based in Perth, a master trainer out of Perth. I get to the unfortunate pleasure of working with these guys on a daily basis. Um, so, sorry. But it's nice to have uh, some, some, someone from China. Some yeah. fresh people? Yeah. Absolutely. Where, where is Perth? Is that really a real place? Uh, it's practically in Asia. Uh. Um, <laughs> we're, I mean, we're, we're here in Shanghai and we're on the same time zone as, uh, as Perth in Western Australia. So, yeah, quite lucky. And I, I don't know if you detected the accent, but I fit in quite well in Perth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, my name's Darren. I'm the commercial master trainer for Microsoft. So I do work on a different side of the business compared to these guys. I do with the fun stuff like server. I deal with OEMs, so uh, Dell, HP, Lenovo. And I upskill them on amazing things, what they can grow their business into with our amazing products. Would you say um, keeping a hanky in your pocket makes you more of a gentleman? Definitely. I think it's Easy. a South Australia thing. Yeah. 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 All, all you South the Australians mm -hmm. are yeah. hanky yeah. really? carriers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is. Don't stop spreading germs. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you keep it to yourself in the one pocket. In one pocket. Yeah. In one pocket. For yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. Rather than you know keeping it on your hands and then putting it in. The <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned from hanky. science class is that you definitely yeah. should pocket yeah. snot. Yeah. Yeah. Can you stop talking so talking? Yeah. Sorry. So so you guys. Welcome to China. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a regional trainer of China Northwest. Uh, oh, yeah. My region, I suppose all the training uh, 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 situation. So uh, every product, uh, software, hardware, so everyone. Very good. <laughs> That's good. And, and how many how many people in your region? Uh, my region is uh, about uh, uh, it's a five a five main city. Five main cities. Five main city. And uh, about uh, uh, 20 stores. 
include the C S and A R. So the China team have been very uh, amazing to us while we've been in here. So thank you for that. Um, do you guys want to take turns telling us what uh, originally made you love Microsoft, starting with Mr. Uh, C J Craig Jackson? Um, I think what made me originally love Microsoft would have been Windows 95. I think that was, uh, I could, I literally knew every tip and trick for Windows 95. You don't look like you're old through. enough to have promoted Windows 95. Thank you, Patch. I was yeah. just saying how much nicer the master trainers are in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, you've backed that up. So Ray, Ray, thank you very much. Fact, Ray, Ray, Ray. His nickname across the office is Craig Relic Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the benefits of being a vampire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Windows 95 for me. Awesome. Uh, for me, I, it has to be Office. Uh, my real big introduction to computers was definitely uh, being in high school, all of the essays, all of the assignments, Word, PowerPoint was a very, very big part of my life. Um, and just the, the ease of, and navigation that Office and those programs allowed me to do, uh, to be productive. Um, Clippy, we all have a story there. Um, I heart Clippy, even to this day. It was that, that was the big defining feature for me. That's awesome. Um, I would say probably, like, so I've used computers from when I was at school and used, used Microsoft products, but I think when I fell in love with Microsoft was when I started playing Xbox. Um, and probably more so in the last 10 years of living in Australia, because um, all my family live in the UK, and my brother lives in the UK, and it's the best way to connect with him, with gaming and playing together and being able to kind of have that same rivalry there that we've had since we were kids on video games as well. So I think that once I fell in love with, with doing that, that's when I fell in love with Microsoft. Awesome. There's many reasons why uh, I fell in love with Microsoft. I think the, the most one that I love that I could have my hands on on a day-to-day -day basis was Windows Phone. I'm one of those people that I loved it because of what it is and what it did and made me feel. And that's how Microsoft, in all of the categories that they uh, that they have, it's about how they make you feel. And that really connected with me and how it could connect with everybody else. So that's, I think, one thing that I really loved about Microsoft. And that's what's kept me here today. Yeah. Cool. Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have two main reasons. Yeah. One is Windows. Uh, before Windows uh, 95, I used Windows Phone, uh, uh, Windows PC, and uh, so many many times. And the second is Xbox. I'm a fans of FIFA, PS, so I'm a sport game fans. So uh, in Xbox, I can uh, experience it very very nice. So this is my reason. Have I got to give my favourite thing about Microsoft as well? You, go for it. Can I do that? Okay, the first time I fell in love with Microsoft, very controversial. Um, it was Windows Vista. Ooh. Whoa. Is that, that so, is I, the reason why is I was in sales at the time when Vista came out. And I remember seeing these features and I actually fell in love with it. I didn't see what the whole problem was back then. Um, but stuff like this feature, Aero, where you could scroll through your windows, it's like an old, um, you know, you've got like multiple desktops now and um, that type of stuff. It's like older version of that, which I loved. Also stuff like, you forget about these really cool features like Shake. That's still in Windows 10. And where you have 10 windows open, you grab one, you shake it, they all disappear. So that's, you know, Vista, we all have our bugbears and stuff, but you know, that's the first time I fell in love with Microsoft, I think, from a sales point of view. So, that's great. He's like Windows. Hey, uh, he mentioned Shake. What's your opinion on that? Shake is one of my favourite features because I'm a I'm a multiple tabs kind of person and I hate going through and minimising everything. So as long as I can just shake one and then just have that one open, nailed it. How do you shake, Can I show us how you shake? No. <laughs> no. Show us how you shake. No. No. Shake. 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 Hey team, as you can see, we are now back home in New Zealand. We had an amazing week on our modern quest in Shanghai. Um, it was fantastic to see all of the people you saw in the podcast, plus so many more, um, our global Microsoft brothers and sisters. Um, it was, as I said, it was yeah. Fletcher's first training. It was cool to meet all of them. It yeah. was really cool. 
Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we will talk a little bit about some of the awesomeness that we learned, why on earth we went to Shanghai for a week, um, what's that all about. Um, but first up, we'll, we'll answer the questions that we asked everybody as well. So first question, what's your favourite feature of the April Update Fletch? Um, now we've had a chance to yeah. use it. And... The April Update, uh, it's, uh, there's actually a surprising amount of mm. ads. Um, and we haven't talked about all of them yet, and this is one that we haven't talked about. Uh, you mean additions? Additions. I thought you yeah. meant like ads as in yeah, no, spam. No, no. No, just to no, clarify. No, we don't do that. Just we to don't clarify. Do that. Okay, sorry, continue. We don't do that. No, no, okay, no, but yeah, so there's been so many great features. Um, the one I want to talk about and highlight is my favourite though, is something called Nearby Share. So Nearby Share, really, really mm. cool. It um, enables Windows 10 PCs to share files and fo um, files and um, I guess web pages between each other. That's awesome. So it's it's really cool. It's really easy to set up. You um you literally if you're in like File Explorer, just click on like a, a document you want to share, mm -hmm. and and you hit that share button, um, and it'll come up with like a new sharing menu, which looks way better than the old one, by the way. Oh. Um, and you'll see that it's looking for nearby devices, or it might if you haven't activated the setting yet prompt you to do that. Cool. Once that's activated, it'll just automatically search for them every time you want to share something. And like, I can already see Hannah's device, so Excellent. she's activated it. She's done well. Excellent. And I think like a feature like that, obviously Fletcher and I sit next to each other every day. We work yeah. a lot together. Um, we're, we're kind of inseparable. <laughs> we're probably, yeah. as you guys can tell, we're pretty noisy people, so we're pretty annoying in the office uh, to be around. Um, so like this, I'm, I'm so excited. Like, that's yeah, such an gonna... awesome feature for us. Instead of being like, hey Fletch, can you come look at this? And yeah. you're just having to like, get across. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I think that that's fantastic and that's such, you know, as we always say, work smarter, not harder. Definitely. Um, as soon as the, the world famous K-Robs came in, I was just like, K-Robs. Yeah, let me <laughs> This is a new you feature. This. this is going to be great for you. Yeah. Use it. Use and it now. It wasn't something, we didn't yeah. shout it out on the last podcast because mm. we didn't know about it. Um, it wasn't yeah. shouted out anywhere near enough as it should be, so yeah. I highly, highly recommend. Um, it's also down in your action center as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great shout. And um, it'll, it'll just keep getting better as well. They already let us know that um, they want to try, you know, integrate it with, with the different um, systems out there, like I always said, Android. So that would, that'll be very cool if that does come to fruition. It'll, awesome. you know, continue Microsoft's theme of, of working with different devices better, working better together. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, and I'm going to steal Hannah's thunder, but I don't usually get to do that. I don't usually get to do that. Uh, never not talking. But, no, no, no. <laughs> You make me sound horrible, <laughs> Hannah. No, no. Um, but and genuinely, um, one thing that I do want to just shout out is how how much um, Microsoft, just as a base consumer platform, um, is getting better every day. So, Absolutely. you know, File Explorer, Microsoft Edge, mm. all, all that, um, you know, entertainment purpose software on, on Windows 10 is mm, absolutely totally. amazing. And a lot of the April update has just gone and made it better. It's made it look cleaner. It's made it easier to navigate. Yeah. Like I it's love, really um, improved a lot of little things. Yeah, as Bill Bush said um, earlier in this podcast, mm. he was talking about Windows Phone and how amazing the UX is in there. Um, and I, I love yeah. that he referred to it as big windows. Like um, big brother windows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But he's totally mm. right. And like, I highly encourage you, just go into the settings. Like, do your April update, go into the settings, and it's such a yeah, marvelous experience. It's yeah, and it's changed in quite a few areas as well. Mm. Um, like, even in Edge, where your favorites, your downloads, all of that kind of stuff the are. The hub is what it's called. The hub, excellent. Yeah. I learned something today as well. Um, so much better. But go and check out how that looks, because it's, it's different, and yeah, I do genuinely believe that it's better. Very, yeah. very cool. What's yours, Hannah? My favourite is Timeline, and I know that that is probably going to be everybody's yeah. favourite, and it's the obvious favourite, but I committed to the challenge I set myself, if you guys remember, um, in our last podcast, I admitted to being a filthy desktop saver. Um, <laughs> you know, like, just when I'm working on stuff, like, I always save it to the desktop, because anything I work on, I've either got to present it very soon, um, or share it to, with somebody else. Yeah. Um, so it's always front of mind, so I put it on my desktop, and then it got to the point where I just never ever cleared my desktop away. 
Um, so I've put some stuff into my own OneDrive. Fletcher and I, of course, have a shared OneDrive. Yeah. Um, but I was guilty in my clear out. I did it literally the day we went to Shanghai. So, you know, I was like, it's What time. you should be doing right now. Shame. So, okay, there was some music error going on. I'm only human, <laughs> um, but I did make the mistake of accidentally, like, one a presentation, one, one, one thing, Fletch. She says one. I uh, will probably discover a couple more down the track, um, but one particular presentation I'd save mm. two different versions of it, one I put in our shared folder, one I put in my personal folder, and the final one went to the personal one. So we were talking about it, Fletch <laughs> opened it, and he was just like, I want to change this, I want to do that. I was like, mate, what are you talking about? I've already done it. Yeah. And then he showed me, and he just goes, no you haven't, Hannah, like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, I haven't. So I was able to use my timeline to find the correct version and see that there were two different versions of the file. And it comes up as well with where that file's actually saved. Um, so I, it saved my life already. Yeah. Um, super, super helpful. Um, and it's, it's so easy to navigate and you can set it up, I haven't done this yet, I will admit, but you can set it up to use uh, with other devices as well. Yeah. So if I'm using Edge on my iPhone, I can then see that feed in there as well. It's cool. I'm, well, that's something I would need to experiment with. I broke my phone in Shanghai, so I haven't set it up properly yet. You did indeed. Yeah, but where are your photos, uh, Fletch? OneDrive. Yeah, once Not again, OneDrive photos, saves the day. Everything. Everything? It's everything pretty much that awesome. I need. Awesome. Do you have all your contacts? I have my contacts. Because you save them as Outlook contacts? Yeah. Oh. Oh. So I'm, I'm pretty pretty good. Well, well, it's so easy. They asked me when I handed it in to the, um, the person who assesses the phone for insurance, mm. do you need data? And I'm like, no. 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 I've got no. myself covered with a magic that is Office 365. Cool. And it is fantastic. Before Hannah gets a chance to talk, because I know she'll steal my answer <laughs> otherwise, um, we, we also asked what your favourite, uh, or what made you fall in love with Microsoft. Mm. So I want to steal Hannah's funder now, while Great. I can get in early. Great. Um, and I'm going to say like, there were so many options to choose from. So many so options, hard. and we had so many great ones. So that, many great I think ones. That I... was what surprised me most with asking people. Mm. Um, as I said, like it was such a walk down memory lane of things. Like, how old are these people? <laughs> no <laughs> like, offense to Mr. Mr. Craig Jackson, uh, oh, vampire, vampire extraordinaire. extraordinaire <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he he uh, promoted Windows ninety five, which blew my mind. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So. For me, for me, I, I, yeah, like I said, it was really hard, you know, there was the first uh, computer I customised, the um, first laptop I brought for myself, but mm. my choice is, and it's a cliche choice, is when I'm Surface... I'm just saying, this is your third choice. No, this is, this is the okay, choice. This those is, were, those right. were other two things that That's could have been the choice. That's the great thing about Windows, is that yeah. it provides you with a choice. Um, my first, my favourite thing, and it made me fall, like, truly fall in love with Microsoft as a brand, was when the first Surface first hit stores. And I was, I was working in store at the point, I remember how excited I was to unbox it. We'd heard about it online, we knew that it was the this, this sexy, sexy beast mm -hmm. um, PG yes. podcast, um, <laughs> which had amazing specs inside. And yeah. that was enough to sell me, if I'm honest. There was nothing like it out there at the time. Absolutely. Nothing from any manufacturer, um, particularly, unfortunately, nothing in Windows. Yeah. So it was really cool. There to was have nothing such anywhere. A premium nothing device. Nothing anywhere, anywhere like it. Mm. Um, so it was, yeah, so cool to have a premium device in. Um, and it had such impact in store, and you could. Uh, there were customers who knew about it and came in and asked about it mm. and there were more customers who didn't know about it yet because it was in its early stages but when you talk to them their, their jaw dropped Absolutely, because no yeah. one could believe that this super super fine computer yeah. um, which you know had a great kickstand it looked like a tablet but it was an ultimate laptop um, wow was just such a beast and all the great accessories to go with it ah, mm. it was it was a very fun exciting time i remember so many people asked me this was like i realized that the tablet that can replace your laptop was very much the line that came yeah. up with surface i learned about it on expert zone um and i just soaked in that information and i genuinely for a while thought that that was a great tagline i made up myself and then i realized that <laughs> But another, another great tagline I had while I was out promoting them, um, people asked me so frequently, is this Microsoft's answer to the iPad? Yeah. And my line back was, no, this is Microsoft's answer <laughs> to it, everything. It just can't compare. 
yeah, yeah. absolutely like it, it was yes it was Microsoft's tablet but it was also Microsoft's first ever laptop on the market that they created the hardware mm -hmm. for um, and just as, as we've talked about with five years of Surface Pro earlier in our first ever podcast I think, yeah, yeah. Um, just how much the market has expanded and kind of been like yeah we need this we need that two on one we need that tablet that can replace your laptop yeah. you know we need all of these things um, it's very much just awesome we're on the up and up it started so many amazing things so I, I agree with you um, and that was I think yeah when I first started this job and I got given my Surface Pro 2 it was the first device I had that I actually cared about um, yeah. You know, we'd had the desktop at home, um, I'd got my parents, lovely Raywin and Paul, thank you guys so much for investing and buying me a laptop um, and I think my second to last or my last year at high school to take through to university. Um, it was a great, it was a Toshiba satellite, 15.6 inch, it was heavy, it lasted 20 minutes off charge, but at that point in time it was awesome, I was super grateful to have it, but then I got my Surface Pro 2. And that's when things really started to change. You know, I didn't have to think, oh, no, I really need to take my laptop to uni every day. It was yeah. light, it was portable, it was easy to use, it had touch, it had ink. And, you know, I studied music, so I was in a room surrounded by people with MacBooks all the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I'd ink on the screen, people would look at me and be like, Hannah, what are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing that? Can I do that? I'm like, no, no you can't. Um, so really, really cool. But that's, that's not my thing. I'm just agreeing with you. Uh -huh. I am going to choose something else. Uh -huh. As well. I ah. totally thought it was your <laughs> No. No, what's so, the thing? When I really fell in love with Microsoft as a whole, I love Surface Pro 2, I loved Windows 8, but I really fell in love on uh, the 25th of July, 25th of July 2015, 29th of July, sorry, incorrect date, 29th of July 2015 when Windows 10 was launched. It's so long ago. It's so long ago. It's crazy. <laughs> like, it's crazy. We're now in yeah. 2018. Um, so it's been around for a little while, but I really fell in love with Windows 10 um, because it showed how much Microsoft listened. And that's something that I really take pride in. I think we've talked about this yeah. before on the podcast. Um, but, you know, the, the insider preview for Windows 10 was made public for about a year before it was actually released. Um, and it's still going. So, you know, people can provide feedback on new features, they can test them early, and they can help shape the user interface in which they'll yeah. be using. Um, and I think, for me, that just, uh, it was just like, yes. Like, someone is out there listening, like, there is a whole area dedicated to listening to people's feedback and making changes based on that. And I think, you know, bringing everything you've known and loved from the previous versions of Windows all under one umbrella, plus all that new stuff, um, and it just keeps getting better. Um, obviously, we've had the anniversary update, the creators update, the full creators update, and now this new April update. And we were talking, you know, it's just gotten better and better and better as things have gone on. So I, I love everything. Um, as Danelle said it earlier yeah. on, like it's so hard, it's like a parent picking their favourite child. Um, but I think Windows 10, for a lot of people, where, um, yeah, where I think Microsoft absolutely found its feet and its place yeah. in the market. Um, and became, you know, Sasha Nadella has got an awesome quote that we want to move people from needing Windows to choosing Windows to loving Windows. And I think the loving Windows really comes through on the Windows team. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Glitch, why, why on earth did we go on this modern quest to Shanghai? I don't know, Hannah. You, you don't know? Uh, I, well, I do. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Come on, I, I do know. Of course I, I know. It was, Where were it was you? a great experience. <laughs> Um, no, it was very cool, like, I think we'll each share a favourite favorite mm -hmm. thing about, or like, a favourite session, I guess, at Shanghai. Okay. But what I really want to talk about is how much I also enjoyed, you know, just meeting people and establishing yeah. collaboration with different markets, different countries. Absolutely. So, so that we can be better. Yes. Yeah. You'll hear us say, be better a lot, and yeah. we're, we're absolutely not taking um, the piss. Yeah. PG podcast. <laughs> um, but... It's, it's true, like, we are always looking at ways to be better, to make, make things more interesting for you guys so that it's easier mm. when, when, you know, you're on the sales floor, you're out back, whatever it is mm. you do in store. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, meeting all these people, really cool. Really cool to, to also meet um, a lot of the people who operate out of Seattle. So yep. there's all of a sudden all these new people I know that I can go to for different, you know, resources, different uh, totally. tips and tricks. It's lots of new Facebook friends. Lots of new Facebook <laughs> friends. So very, very cool, very exciting. What was your favourite session? Yeah, well, so you may have heard us mention yeah. the term TTT, um, which is train the trainer. So obviously we 
we train you guys, but we have to learn something somewhere. Yeah. Um, so we, we are incredibly lucky, and I cannot stress that enough, um, what an awesome privilege it is to be able to go um, to Absolutely. very exciting places in the world. Um, this is now our third global event with everyone from everywhere. So last year we went to Amsterdam and Berlin, um, and this year we started off with Shanghai. Um, so it's bringing everybody in roles similar to mine and Fletcher's, so master trainers, um, our field labour and evangelism leads, our commercial trainers. It's bringing everybody all to one place. And as Fletch said, the collaboration, mm. um, the great ideas, the um, you know hearing what's going well, hearing maybe what's not going so well, um, that in itself is totally invaluable. Um, we've got some awesome content which we'll be sharing with you guys in the coming weeks, in the coming months. Um, there's like just so much goodness and so many so you know different ideas and different ways to share things and different ways to talk about stuff. Um, we've got a really cool game, which I don't spoil too much. I'm not going to spoil, spoil it. You just much. looked at me like, excuse I was like, me. Sorry, we need a. It's, we've I got wanna, to keep some I things up build our the sleeve. Hype train up, the okay, hype train, it's very exciting. Fingers crossed, you'll see it on our next podcast. Fingers crossed, that's fingers the plan. Crossed. But it's very exciting, and I think you know some of just the the basic presentation skills that we get to take away from mm. this is yeah so so invaluable like not just the content itself but the way it's presented like yeah. we had this really awesome session uh with many and um, the theme was modern quest so he he ran a session as if he was an alien um yeah. and he was down on earth and there was you know these things that he'd heard about but didn't know about and like we had clues around the room and we had to solve the clues in order to talk about that certain session. Cool. It was super interactive, heaps of fun. Um, so that was definitely a highlight for me. Yeah, if um, you think you, you've heard of Manny before, you absolutely have because he does a lot of experts on articles. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, he was a very busy man so unfortunately we don't have him on this podcast but he's uh, check out all of his content because yeah. he is an amazing, amazing man. Um, and yeah, just uh, just those different ways of interacting, the different ways yeah. of training, um, the different ways of selling to our customers as well. Um, very, very important. Yeah. So Hannah, mm. what was your favourite session? Okay. I'm gonna gonna streamline it. Uh, while while Hannah's taking, do you want me to go first? Is that yes, easier? yes, please go cool. first. No, I'm I'm excited to talk about this because um, there was a session that we actually did on mm -hmm. um, how we can work with social media. So you know, we already mm -hmm. have our podcast. Uh, it was a very cool session. Um, we actually got to um, have a bit of a panel with some some great YouTube stars and, and mm -hmm. Weibo stars, which is a Chinese social media. Yeah, but. Um, we also got to see what um, the French team, the French versions of us, are, yeah. are doing with Facebook and how they're using um, their Facebook page. Yeah, and definitely recommend checking it out. So yeah. if you search experts on France, um, talking over me, Hannah. Sorry, no, I'm oh, joking. I'm I'm joking. Do. I, I pull. Um, I like to pull legs, um, <laughs> as you guys have probably already told out, figured out, but. Uh, yeah. You yeah. might have to get used to it a little bit. <laughs> but there, yeah. Yeah, there, are, there are some amazing <laughs> yeah. um, bits of content coming from around the world. No jokes. It, it's so amazing. Like It genuinely is amazing. And um, the reason why I picked that session over all the other great sessions, because there were so many great sessions mm. there and it was really hard to choose, is because of the way it inspired me. Yes. So I saw that session, it, it was on our, um, our last day of, of training, yeah. and I'm like, I can't wait to get back because I have to make this happen in New Zealand. They're doing such a great job. Yeah. Like, uh, unbelievable videos, so definitely check it out. It doesn't matter if you speak French or not, because yeah. you will learn things. They actually do silent videos as well. So yeah, we're, we're learning to be better. Yeah, learning, learning to, be to be better. better. So um, watch, watch Tim UK did some awesome yeah. live streams while we were over there definitely. as well. Um, yeah, just so, so many cool things we can take away to learn to be better as well. Um, yeah. So, just back interrupting, to you. I don't back know, to you, but back to me. Back to um, you. We did this awesome. <coughs> sorry, I did get a little bit sick on my travels, so um, that's, I've got a delightful glass of water here to keep me powering through. Mm. Um, but one of my favourite sessions was actually on the first day. They really started off with a bang um, by letting us run wild in Shanghai. Yeah, um, it was very cool. We got put into teams and we got sent to a mall. Luckily, the China team were there to help us out. They were amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Um, but we got put into teams and we got given three different stores to go and visit and they were different kinds of stores so we got um, an Adidas or Adidas however you choose to say it, an Adidas store, um, a glasses store and a makeup store 
and you know we got asked to answer questions like how did it make you feel how did it look how was it presented what kind of furniture was there all of those kinds of things and i think like we we only talk about one part of the story yeah um which is product knowledge but it just really shows that how how much the way your store looks the yeah. way you talk to your customer whether or not you greet your customer um, all of these kinds of different things can really affect the experience that your customers will have in your store. Yeah. And I think that... Right. I want to hijack now. Okay. I'm going to hijack. Okay, I'm and like write down <laughs> one, one thing that, and I, I talk about this a lot with our field team, um, but we don't talk about it a lot with you guys, mm. um, is you know laying out products so it tells a story. Absolutely. So if you're not there, the product should tell a story as well. And some mm. of you guys might have heard that before. Um, yeah. And if you've ever met Fletcher, you've, you've definitely ever, heard that. Yeah. But you know, having product pretty much in a logical order, like you totally. know, when when we um, have our product out, we don't put our um, you know all our type covers under the Surface laptops. Yeah, <laughs> they should be with the Surface Pro because that's what it goes Absolutely. with it matches, and that's how you personalize it. So totally. hijacking stopped. Yeah, that, no, yeah. great, great point, great point, mm. and I think yeah, that just really, um, I guess hit home um, and you know we came back and we all gave our feedback as to how our experience was and stuff and just you know the the different cultural things as well like yeah. we we very quickly learned that in China it's very much led by the customer um, you know we, we weren't really greeted when we were in yeah. the store but if we were hovering around something maybe that's when people would approach us and it was up to us as the customer to ask the questions and start the conversation so, you know, obviously here in New Zealand, we roll things a little bit differently, um, you know, and if a customer is totally ignored when they come into your store, they'll probably walk out. Yeah. Um, but that, that was just something really interesting cool. that I picked up that, um, you know, cultural differences, um, maybe like knowledge differences, yeah. you know, you always get those people who come into store and they're just browsing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, we learned some cool, cool new ways to um, ideally break through that as well, which we'll be talking yeah. about a bit later on uh, in the next podcast. Probably my highlight from, from that day um, mm. and is we, we didn't just go to free stores, but we also went to a restaurant, one to mm. eat lunch, because we needed lunch, yeah. but also to, to rate how how they serve you and how they're laid out and they look. Yeah. And I really like that because my personal um, feeling was that was the best experience out of all the stores we visited was actually mm. the restaurant. Everyone loves and food. Yeah, just so just yeah, instantly food, up, yeah, up. <laughs> food up, up, up. But but also like um you know because I've worked in retail I've definitely you know if I look at a bulk stack and I'm like oh gross yeah um, <laughs> it's just what you do right um but I haven't really analysed how you can take from a restaurant to, yeah to make it make yourself better and it was it was quite cool you know we couldn't speak the same language but they gave amazing service awesome. Um, so Did you communicate like by photos on the By menu? photos, yeah. uh, by Microsoft Translate. Awesome. Um, so all, all those types of things, but just um, yeah, really paying attention mm. to, to how they do things to make you feel welcome. And, and, you cool. Know, it's, it was just very cool and something mm. I've not looked at before. And I think that that relates really well to our previous mm. podcast where we've talked about accessibility. And you know, we've talked about these mm. temporary and permanent disabilities. Yeah. And being in a country and not being able to speak the language is definitely a temporary disability. And like you mm. said, you use Microsoft Translate, which is awesome. Yeah. And you know, all of the tools that we do have that can help you in any kind of situation yeah. as well. If you don't have Microsoft Translate, I'm translating PowerPoint. It's, yeah. It's awesome. I yeah, was totally. uh, using it to try to speak Vietnamese to my wife yesterday. So. Excellent. You're learning. Yeah, you're learning it. And like, yeah. it, it's so cool. And like, mm. When you learn something new, how many times it can integrate into yeah. your life in so many different ways is amazing and fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, also, again, like um, it's my it was my turn to talk over you, but <laughs> nah, but it's been it's been really cool. It's been cool to take you guys on this uh, experience with us. Totally. Um, I, I had a, I did have a sneak peek at, at the footage we recorded, and I laughed a lot. So hopefully you guys laughed yeah. a lot as well. Um, and just have a great time on this podcast. I think it's, it's our best one so far, but as always, we want to hear how to be better in the comments. So yeah. make sure you post down below. Let um, us know your answers to those two questions yeah. as well. So what is your favorite feature of the Windows April update? Mm. Um, and what was the first product that made you absolutely fall in love with Microsoft? And I think that's a great segue into, because we do have a- We did have comments. the hashtag help us help Hannah yeah. and Jay set me a challenge which I accepted as you see in this podcast. So I haven't counted 
the amount of signatures I got and I feel like this isn't doing us justice on, on camera, but you may be able to see. We did get quite a few. I'm quite proud of my efforts. Yeah. Um, I did, as soon as you left that comment, I was like, oh no, our t-shirt's black. <laughs> um, but I did get a silver and a gold vivid. So thank you so much for requesting that challenge, Jay. Um, this is gonna come on its way to you. Um, so we did this for you, Jay, so we will send you the t-shirt. Please PM us with your address. Um, and thank you so much for your challenge. Awesome. And thank you for listening to our podcast, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and yeah. we'll see you again next week.